In this video, I want to talk to you about how important it is to understand conceptually all of the theory behind what we're doing in GIS and also how important it is to understand how individual software packages such as ArcGIS in this particular case implement those things because you have to understand both because unfortunately software packages will let you get things wrong and, and I wish it weren't that way but in addition to understanding everything conceptually we also have to understand all the nuances of the particular software package that we're working in to understand what it does, what it doesn't do, and what mistakes it will let you make in a certain sense. So in this case, we want to talk about uh, data calculations as it relates to um, projections. So I just have the countries of the world loaded into a uh, ArcMap project uh, like we've been working with. And what I want to do is I want to run some basic area calculations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, open up the attribute table, right click and go to attribute table on uh, the countries. And so here is the data that uh, this file has preloaded. Notice it already does have uh, an, an area field, but we want to run some calculations ourselves. So what I want to do is I want to add a column onto this table, and in GIS we call columns fields. So I want to add a field or a column onto this data table, and then I want to calculate the area of each one of these uh, countries into that uh, into that column. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to go over here to table options and I'm going to drop down and I have this option here called add field and I'm going to pick it. And I already have a field named area in here so I'm going to call this area one so we know which one we're calculating into. And then I do have a drop down list and we could, are going to talk about data types and all of that uh, in much more detail later on, especially when we talk about vector data. Uh, let's just use long integer. We won't worry about uh, decimal places here, but I'll say long integer. Basically, long integer means that we can hold larger numbers than just the short integer can. And then precision, we'll say uh, 25. I'm not too worried about this right now and as far as what it means, but basically we want to make sure the computer holds enough space to calculate a large number inside. So I'll say OK. And now when I do that, you will notice that I get uh, area one over here and it's not holding any information right now. I want to calculate data in this field, so I'm going to right click. And then I have a, a couple of options for calculating information inside. One of them is the field calculator. But what I'm doing right here, because I want to calculate the area of each one of these countries, is uh, calculate this based on the geometry that I have here. So I'm going to go to calculate geometry. It warns me that I'm not currently in an edit session, but that's OK for what I'm doing right here. So I'm just going to say yes. And it's going to ask me what I would like to calculate. And I would like to calculate area. And then this right here, I have this option here that says use coordinate system of the data frame. And that's what I'm going to do because I'm going to run a, a variety of different calculations here with different coordinate systems as uh, ArcGIS defines it here. So I do have my data display. My data is being projected into the Mercator projection. And let's say that I would like uh, uh, square miles. And I'm going to say OK. And yes, no problem. OK, so now I have a field here full of the area, should be area in square miles of each one of those. I want to repeat this exercise. So this is a Mercator projection. And we know that one of the characteristics of the Mercator projection is that it preserves shape. It preserves angles. It's a conformal projection. And it's notorious for distorting area. Let's go over here back to layers and let's change up the projection that our uh, project here is in. And this time let's go back to the uh, Robinson projection, which we know is a compromised projection. There we go. And let's repeat this process. Area 2, I will call it. And calculate geometry. And we're still calculating area. We want to be in square miles because we want to be able to compare these. And this time we'll be using Robinson. OK. And I have a different I have a calculation here, and you will notice that I have different numbers. That should already be telling you that something is up. I'm asking for the area of all of these countries, and all I did was change how the countries are displayed in my ArcMap project, and I am getting different numbers for my area calculation. You can see that like this one is uh, 137,000 something, but over here it's uh, 230,000. Let's go ahead and do one more just for comparison's sake. So I'm going to go over here to um, add field again, area three, 
everything else the same. Before I calculate it though, I'm going to go back over here to layers and I'm going to choose another projection. And this time I want to choose an equal area projection. Here is a cylindrical equal area world. We'll pick that one. All right. And now I want to run the calculation. Area in miles. Okay. The result is that I get different numbers again. I get different numbers for every single one of those calculations that I've run. Let's specifically, for the sake of example, sort these right here. Let's look at Russia. Let's see what the area of Russia is. This one right here, area one, remember that was done in a Mercator projection. This one was done in the Robinson projection, and this was done in the cylindrical equal area projection. The cylindrical equal area gives us the smallest area. It's very easy to see what's going on here when you use Russia as an example, because Russia is so large, and of course it's in the uh, northern latitudes, the, uh, the high latitudes, high northern latitudes. And so we know that if you show it in a um, conformal projection, such as the Mercator projection, it really exaggerates its area on the map. And we can see that here. We get that the area of Russia over here is uh, 31.9 million square miles according to this area calculation here, when we were in the Mercator projection, versus over here, over here in the equal area projection, we get about 6.5 million and some change. And we get an intermediate value over here uh, when we use the Robinson projection, the compromise projection. And so the question here is, what is the area of Russia? And one person once responded, well, it depends on what projection you're in. And that is completely false. The area of Russia, is a fact of our planet. You know, there's a certain area over which Russia has control on our planet, and that has a mathematical area. And that has nothing to do at all with the projection that my computer system sitting here on my desk right now is in. And of course, conceptually, we probably do understand what the student was probably trying to say when he said that, but I think it does bring up a very important point, and that is that when we're doing GIS here, we're trying to discover information about the planet or about the world. We want correct information about the world as the result of doing calculations here on our computer. Depending on what we do with our computer system, we may or may not get the correct answer. In this case, area three calculation is the one that's correct because it was done in an equal area projection. The other two are just wrong. So we can sit down here and we can do all of the button pushing correctly as far as adding in that field that we did and calculating geometry. And we can still get the wrong answer because we didn't do that correctly as far as the area, as far as making sure that we are in an equal area projection. And this can be disastrous because if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to be having the computer do things, but you're going, it's going to be giving you the wrong answers. And I think there are a lot of things that we could say about this right here. Uh, one of them is that we probably expect for the computer to be smarter, or you might expect for the computer system here, this particular program, to be smarter than it is. I've asked for the calculation of area of countries, um, and we're talking about geographic information here, and we have all the problems of uh, representing that data in two dimensions and everything else. But this program is just happy to execute an area calculation, regardless of whether or not you actually should be calculating area based on the particular projection that your particular project is in. You know, you might be expecting the computer to be more sophisticated than that. Oh, if I ask it for an area calculation, it somebody has already programmed all that information in there. And, and regardless of what type of projection my, uh, my individual project is in, it's going to go back and, and make all the necessary corrections sort of behind the scenes to make sure that my area calculation is correct. And then maybe you'll get the exact same correct area calculation, regardless of what projection you happen to be looking at it in at the computer at the time. Um, but that's not true. I certainly think that uh, it should be, and if I were designing a GIS system from scratch today, uh, it would certainly take that into account. And of course, there are also ways to do something like an area calculation um, in three-dimensional space. And maybe if you're working in the cloud when you have uh, more computational resources, maybe we should just move to always doing our calculations in non-Euclidean uh, geometry in three-dimensional space and not have the projection have an impact on that calculation. Even if you can't do that computationally, you might be expecting, well, the computer won't let me do something wrong. It's at least going to give me a warning message. You know, we didn't even have a warning message pop up here when we were in the Mercator projection that said, hey, yeah, sure, I will do this calculation for you, but you are not in an equal area projection and the numbers are going to be wrong. So the lesson here is that you cannot rely on your computer to get all of the calculations right. 
This is why both understanding the theory behind GIS is so important, as well as understanding all of the nuances of the particular software package that you're using. The ArcGIS software package has all of these idiosyncrasies that you have to know and you have to find out about if you're going to become an expert in this particular software. You have to kind of find those all out. And then if you want to move to another software platform, you have to kind of find out all of the peculiarities about it. I wish it wasn't that way, but that still remains sort of the reality of our situation today. It probably also should be making you think, well, gee, if something as simple as this area calculation can go so wrong if I don't know what I'm doing, what other things is this software program going to get wrong if I don't really understand how to manipulate it correctly in order to get the right answer? And that's a great question. Uh, a lot of that goes into, like I said, just knowing your, your software package and doing some experiments. When you know from a theoretical standpoint in GIS that uh, you know this is the correct way of doing things, but you know the computer might interpret it uh, this way or that way or some other way, you can run an experiment just like we did here when we were calculating area in three different ways, and we found out that ArcMap will give us the disastrously wrong answer if we are not in the correct projection when we run the calculation. So I think I've made my point here. This little exercise demonstrates why it's so important to understand the theory behind what you're doing and also have expertise in understanding how your particular software package operates. Because if you don't have that, you're going to end up with some disastrously wrong answers. 